Welcome to MD. In this video, I'd like to discuss about complexity and simplicity in science. It's been said that the laws of physics of fundamental nature, they are simple, but the world that we observe are complicated. We have to make a distinction between the fundamental laws themselves and what are happening, the outcomes. The outcome can be complex, although the fundamental laws are simple. There are two reasons for this. First, sometimes a slight change in initial condition can lead to very big difference in the outcome. And also, even if we know the exact state of the initial condition, there are processes that are <clears throat> truly random so we, we cannot really pr predict what will happen next. We can only assign some probability. The way that science works, sometimes you have to make some idealization and approximations in order to simplify the problem to remove some complication so that you can focus on the essential laws underlying the motion of a particle, for example. I give some initial push to the book and the book moves for a while and then it stops. Why is that so? Because there is friction opposing the direction of the motion. But in a vacuum where there is no interaction with other objects, the book will move forever with a constant speed. That's the statement of Newton's first law. An object will keep moving at constant speed if there is no net force acting on it. In, this happens in the so-called inertial frame of reference. So Newton realized that force is not maintaining the velocity, but it changes the velocity. That's why it's easier to study celestial objects. So let's take a look at this. Suppose uh, an object, that's a planet, has some velocity at some point. If there is no other object interacts with the planet, the planet will just keep moving with constant speed. But there is a sun here exerting some force. That's the gravitational force. The force change the direction of the motion, it changes the direction of velocity and also the magnitude of the velocity. And they found that there is a quantity called energy <coughs> that stays the same throughout the motion of this particle. Kinetic energy and potential energy. Kinetic energy is due to the motion of the object and potential due to interaction with other objects. So as the planet is closer to the sun, the potential increases and kinetic decreases. When it's further from the sun, the kinetic increases and the potential decreases. So Newton's success in describing the motion of planet and also terrestrial object leads to some kind of deterministic view. Given exact initial or boundary conditions, you can always predict the future. But this only applies to a specific set of problems. Because in, in practice, you may have some inaccurate measurement, so you don't have accurate initial conditions. And even in some phenomena, perfect knowledge of initial condition may lead to unknown or unpredictable outcome 
because of the so-called randomness. If you hold a pencil in perfectly symmetrical condition, it has the same chance any direction it can pick to fall. Even with complete control of initial condition, you can only predict the future with some probability. And in quantum mechanics, if you have accurate knowledge about the position, then you have inaccurate knowledge of momentum or how fast it's moving. So if you know how fast it's moving, you don't have the accurate position measurement. In physics, there are symmetries. And symmetries none other than saying that there are quantities that are invariants, that are conserved even though there are changes in the state of the object. So time symmetry leads to conservation of energy. Symmetry of translation leads to the conservation of linear momentum. Rotational symmetry is the conservation of angular momentum. Symmetry has been central to physical theory. For example, weak interaction and electromagnetism can be put under one symmetry group. The weak interaction is responsible for radioactive decay and electromagnetism is for electric and magnetism. But when they put together in one symmetry, this is the interaction and they predict the existence of W plus W minus and Z bosons. There is also a chaotic system when you have a complete knowledge of how it works. You have this equation describing the phenomena, but if the initial condition change by a little, the outcome may change by a lot. Uncertainty can grow exponentially. One of the example is a snooker game. When you try to break the balls, even with the similar very close initial push, the outcome may be different with a lot. Another example is the weather forecast. You only have samples of the weather condition now. You take samples from several locations and extrapolate that uh, initial condition. But even small inaccuracy in initial condition can lead to very dramatic change in the future state of this system. That's why uh, it's hard to make accurate prediction for the next few weeks. You can only be accurate for one or two days. And even in one day, there may be some uncertainty in the prediction. So some phenomena shows higher level of complexity even though we know how it works in terms of the basic laws, some of the phenomena we are uncertain about the basic law, although it will be very simple once we find the basic laws, like quantum gravity. That's all I have to say now. Thanks for watching. Bye.